this is Cindy Cochran. Welcome to the podcast of my show. Remember, you can join me live every weekday morning from 10 to 11 a.m. on Lone Star Community Radio, on Conroe's FM 106.1 and 104.5, and globally on IRLoneStar.com. If you're a big fan of my podcast, subscribe to my YouTube and SoundCloud channels, and you're always invited to my Facebook page, The Cindy Cochran Show. The Cindy Cochran Show is brought to you by our title sponsor, The Wooten Financial Group. Call today for all your financial concerns, 936-449-5952. You're listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZW LP Conroe and 106.1 KZCC LP Conroe and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. It is... Tuesday. And you know, on Tuesday, what we have is Truthful Tuesday. That means you always got to tell the truth. So whoever I have on today will absolutely has, you know, has signed their, the, the whole agreement that you have to tell the truth, nothing but the truth. And uh, since that's so popular right now, because there's so much going on in Congress of everybody having to tell the truth and, and uh, getting at the truth. So it, it makes perfect sense for this to happen. Boy, I, uh, I'm so happy that you've uh, joined us on the Cindy Cochran Show. Uh, I want to, first of all, my, my goodness, what happened in uh, Manchester, England uh, last night was horrible, horrific, and um, the cowards will pay. Uh, but uh, for them to do that to children, I'm sitting there watching parents standing there waiting to see if these one of the kids screaming and trying to get out of that place is theirs. How horrible that must have been. So, uh, boy, our prayers and thoughts are definitely, definitely uh, with them. And I'm trying to explain that to my 10-year-old because she loves the singer, that uh, what happened and why. So it's horrible. But um, security is everything right now. And what a great uh, segue to who I have with us for our first segment is John Petty. John has been on before, and we had so much fun with John uh, about all of his uh, – his stories and uh, background. He is uh, one of the owners of Texas Technology. Are you a partner with someone? Or are you are you the man? I'm a partner. Okay. Okay. Well, we want to make sure that uh, <laughs> we don't give you all the credit. That's right. But uh, John, welcome to uh, the Cindy Cochran Show again. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. I'm so glad to have you back. Um, we uh, we talked about a lot of things that uh, his company does. They're right here in uh, in Conroe on 105. I mean, uh, 75. Right. 75, yeah, 75, down uh, near, see, and I can say this to people that live around here and that are listening to 106.1 or uh, 104.5 and tell them that uh, you know where uh, Mackenzie's Barbecue is and you know where Joe's Pizzeria is. Well, he's uh, right across the street from Joe's and uh, next to uh, Mackenzie. Uh, so you'll see out on the front, though, it says computer services. And oh, my word, John, you do so much yeah, more. He's right next to the tailor, too. The tailor? Yeah, and the tailor's yeah. been there 34 years. So yeah, I'm yeah. actually going there today. <laughs> oh, are yeah. you? Oh, stop by and say hi. And he'll tell you stories that will raise the hair on your hair, arms. It's just amazing uh, what he can tell you. But he can't do that over over the Do radio. you know him? Who, John? Oh, I was talking about the tailor. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> He's an interesting guy, that's for sure. He is. I don't know how, how much interaction you've had with him, John. but. Oh, but John is uh, John. I mean, he's got stories to tell. But uh, they, he is... Uh, how long are you with the uh, Navy and doing IT work for the Navy? I was in the Navy five years. Um, okay. My last tour was in Guam, and I was the information system security manager for the island. For the whole island? For the whole island. For the whole island. And because uh, I, I got my history, I mean, my geography lesson, where Japan is, in compare, you know, to where, where you were. And we were just talking about how, uh, what all you had to do, what all was happening at that time. And... That was how many years ago, or how long ago was that? Ooh, it was quite a bit. <laughs> Back was, in uh, 2000, 2003. Okay. Oh, to me, that was just yesterday. What are you talking about? <laughs> I thought you were going to say, like, 1948, I was there in Guam. And, uh, no, but that uh, you've uh, you've seen so much. You've seen the rise of technology even from that point, right? Oh, yeah. Things that people can do and get into. But at that point, when you were working with, uh, with the Navy, you, uh, you've got a lot of behind the scenes and uh, things that, uh, you know, you'd have to kill me if you told me, right? There's a <laughs> lot of things that you had to be, have clearance to to be able to uh, 
to do to keep everybody safe and secure and not let people hack in, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, I had a top secret clearance. That's always fun for your neighbors, too, because when you go to get that, the FBI starts calling your neighbors and your family. Oh, wow, to, to make sure you're a good guy. Yeah, and then <laughs> they start calling you and say, uh, why is the FBI calling me? Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, and think about that. You know, you're getting clearance, but it probably scares them to say this on their on their ID, their caller ID. What? Who's calling me? <laughs> what? Um, but uh, I'm sure that makes you popular with your neighbors. But I'm <laughs> I'm thinking that of all the the stories and stuff, everything that comes up in the news now, you are so much more attuned to. You you understand, or you go like, oh, that's nothing, or wow, they better watch out, and and that kind of thing. And you just said to me before we went on the air, which is uh, this is something, the ransomware thing, uh, that's just one name. There's a lot, is there a lot of different names for ransomware the, where people are being hacked into, they, and these guys uh, steal their information and say, if you pay me $300, I'll, I'll give, it to you, give everything back to you. Uh, but this is something that they got from our people, the NSA, right? Correct. How did that happen? How would that happen? Well, the latest virus is the WannaCry virus, Wanna which cry is in a, a ransomware encryption. Encrypts all your data, and the only way to unlock it is to have the, the decrypt key. So that's what they're making you pay for. Uh -huh. But that tool originally came and was hacked from the uh, NSA back in 2013. Uh, it's a tool set called Eternal Blue. So they, from Eternal Blue, they came up with the Wanna Cry virus. Mm -hmm. Now they stopped the Wanna Cry virus because it wasn't properly programmed. Right. So whoever did it didn't really do a good job. Uh -huh. So they were able to stop it with a stop code. So they did that. It still infected about 240,000 computers. Now keep in mind, it only infects computers that are Windows 8.1, Windows 7, Vista, or XP. So if you're on Windows 10, you're safe. Oh, okay. The problem is still about 50% of the people in the world are using Windows 7 or below. But now, is ransomware the same? I mean, if you have 10, you're okay, or... Or even if you have 10, is the ransomware different? Is it more effective? Is it stronger? Or is it the same thing? It's different. That one does not infect 10. Okay. There's already a security patch in place. And actually, uh, Microsoft came out with a security patch about two weeks ago for the WannaCry virus. But oh. again, you got to do your updates. you so. got Okay. Now, see, that's what I, I would listen to the stories and I would listen to these interviews and they and the thing that was always said at the last. Like, well, what do we do? What can we do? How can we protect ourselves? Is this update? Yeah, you gotta have your updates in. See, and every time one of those little things come up, that just I go like, "Shut up! I'm too busy. I don't want to do this kind of thing." And most people do. And that's the problem. Well, yeah, in Windows Seven, you can shut updates off. Windows Ten, you can't. That's one thing, John. I wanted to mention to you as a business, it's it's okay to have that option where it just updates you all the time. But we like to deactivate those because of like we're always running the music, for example. Right. And we're using Windows Ten, and I get a message that we're down. And I was like, "What? What happened? Well, this this update was so crucial that they they didn't really care. They like they just wanted you to have it immediately. And it takes. Mm -hmm. We were down for about seven minutes for the full install because it it redoes everything on the computer. So yeah, and it restarts your computer. Restarts your computer, and it was just really funny because I was like, I wish I could turn that off, but I know how to update because we schedule all. We have about six computers that we use here, and I usually do a schedule update for all of them at the same time. Right, and you can actually set it to where. Uh... If it knows you're during working hours, mm -hmm. it won't do an update. It'll wait till after that to do the restart. And well, I just I just like to be here when it does happen because <laughs> sometimes it doesn't come back on. Oh, and, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I really hate Windows 10 for that. You get the, the only way to not do it is you have to pay a lot of money to get the uh, – I think it's either the enterprise version or it's the bit, the most the highest version you can get. Yeah, that would be enterprise. Yeah, the highest version. You don't have, you can you can turn it off. So yeah. you, you can't override it? Nope. Oh. It's, it, it's required. Okay. Well, in one way, that would certain answer the problem that I have. And everybody else, as you say, uh, does the same thing I do. Like, that's too inconvenient. And it's so funny how the options, they give you more and more options. Okay, well, well, what if while you're sleeping, we could do this? You know, and I go like, no, I could, you know, I th and I'll push no because I'm thinking, I may wake up and want to use my computer. And then it's off because you're, you're doing something to it. Right. And so it keeps asking, like, well, how long do you go to the bathroom for? Maybe we can get something done during that time. I mean, it's just like stuff that they ask and try and get in to do that. But but what I, lo I love about your knowledge and what makes me feel secure about going to someone like you to get to do the things I need to do for my own security system at home, uh, because you, do you guys install 
um, the outside security, inside security, or both, or whatever, the cameras and, and all that. And and even the, uh, the where you can go up and you someone rings your doorbell and you can talk to them from wherever you are and say, uh, you know, nobody's home. I don't, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, taking any uh, thieves in today. <laughs> so you just, uh, you just watch out, my dog's coming or whatever it is that they want to say to them to make them think they're in the house or whatever. But you can do that. You can install that, you know, that system. Correct. Is that system so easy now that people are doing it themselves or do you still need an installation from Well, I mean, you got a lot of people doing it themselves. Mm -hmm. um, then when they get stressed out, then they'll call somebody. <laughs> so you know the, the call is coming. But we are licensed and insured, so um, it's a lot better to go with somebody like that. Right. You can right. find people online that will do it for a lot cheaper, mm -hmm. but you got to watch where you're getting. Right. And well, I'm I'm so glad that you're here. I mean, to have someone with your knowledge and your background, and that we're here and that here we can come to you with, with our problems. Now, you know, what's the weirdest problem? Someone comes up with their computer. They come and bring your computer, and they put their computer. I mean, bring their computer and sit in front of you and go like, "This won't do this, or this won't do that." How, how crazy can some of the requests be, or can you even understand what they're trying to tell you is wrong with the computer? Well, yeah, I mean, for the most part, people put a password on them and they forget what it is and they need the password cracked or um, one thing we've been getting a lot lately on Windows 10 is it will do the updates automatically mm -hmm. and then there's a software that hits a, an issue and then the system won't even boot back up again. Then we have to completely wipe it and reimage the whole thing. Oh my word. And that's with 10. Yeah. So. I've gotten huh. some of the ransomwares in too. We've got a couple that where they've came in. With ransomware? In yeah. Uh -huh. Now, with the, like I said, with the Wanna Cry, there was some issues. But yeah. the new one, which is called Eternal Rock, that one, whoever programmed that, they did it right. Oh. So it doesn't have the same flaws or issues. So if you get that one, you're a little more out of luck. Okay. I got okay. hit with the ransomware. You got you did? I've, I've okay. been hit with ransomware. I know the, the tech guy got hit with it. I was. Uh, oh, no. It was right after I did my taxes for the first time. And so I didn't really know if I did it right. Are wrong, and I get an email saying, you know, we have an issue with your taxes. Mm -hmm. Please review. Click this link, and I, that's that's what got me because I was uh -huh. like, I was nervous. I was like, oh man, I really probably did something wrong. And uh, luckily, I do everything in the cloud. Right. Our family has a, our own cloud server, and so I was didn't really affect me. I just reinstalled Windows and got all my stuff back. So right, and that's the best way to do it. So the best way to fight that is to have a good up to date backup of your system that. Mm -hmm isn't connected all the time because if it is then it's going to get infected just as well well what do you like to do for backup just curious i use a backup drive i'll back my system up at least once twice a week and then unhook the drive and have it would well, you use the windows like because windows comes with an automatic backup where you can like set up a hard drive tell what files to do and then it yells at you if you unplug it exactly uh, <laughs> but i use that for like my music and i use it for my photos and stuff but i only plug it in every once in a while when I know I'm not going to be running anything because it does slow down. It seems to slow down a lot of stuff. Well, yeah. It's, it's backing up. Using so. all that stuff to back up your files. And you can normally set it for like a Saturday or a Sunday night when you know you're not going to be on the computer. Yeah. Start at like 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. Do you so, use any cloud services? Yeah, we actually do quite a bit of cloud backups. So uh, which one do you use? Like, because like, for example, my brother has, I forgot what he called it, but it's their own server. It's like a, a Linux-based cloud-based like it's just you can set up your own little server it's oh, slow yeah, I mean, but it's not like google or onedrive which is pretty dang fast to to sync with and stuff yeah i mean onedrive is owned by uh microsoft so that one's gonna be pretty good a lot of people i know use dropbox um kryptonite is a good one they're pretty costly on space um right now i know microsoft put a lot of money into their cloud services which is called a sir a z u r e so they're putting a lot of money into that and doing a lot of cloud-based applications, virtual desktops, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Now, do you just read continually the magazines and all the uh, the uh, different uh, papers and stuff that come out, and and so that you can stay up with all this? Where do you get all this knowledge, or to to add to your knowledge? Where do you go? Oh, Google. You just go to Google and and search that. I've learned a lot of what I've learned from Google. I mean. Really? Over 20 years, I've been using Google. Yeah, I think that's the best <laughs> IT teacher. Yeah. Is really? Google. 
Well, also Microsoft, because I, mean, I used to work in IT. My brother owns my IT business in Houston. Okay. And Microsoft is usually pretty good about informing you what's coming up. They want to do tests and betas and like all the time with IT companies because mm. they're the ones that are constantly using it. And that's one thing I would say if you people who are IT people, they don't just read it and know it. They just kind of live it. So they yeah. understand where the new things are coming, what's working, what's not working. Because I think like before OneDrive, it was SharePoint. And SharePoint servers were a big deal for businesses. And they right. kind of took away SharePoint and made OneDrive. And then they have OneDrive for business. And then it's like you can use Word, all that stuff online now. Mm -hmm. And it's all cloud-based. See? So 